Okay, you seven, you are in the computer room. You have opened a program called Blender and you are now looking very nervous and you're looking at this screen. Okay, so we have now gone from Gravit, where we worked in two dimensions, to three dimensions. And we're going to model up the wind spinner and we're going to make it all rendered and look really good and maybe put in a little video. So, what you're looking at here is a 3D modeling program and I will show you how it works. First of all, I'm going to go into mine and turn on my screencast key so you can see that little icon down there with the mouse and you can see when I press a shortcut. If I take that, I press the left button on there, G to move and you can see what I'm doing. Let me give you a quick one minute rundown. Left button should select things on the screen. Um, the middle button, the wheel, you press it down and hold it and it's orbit. And if I hold down shift in the middle button, it is called pan and we can pan up and down. And if I roll the wheel, I can zoom in and out. Okay, the three things that start with Blender, the camera, the light, and a mesh. We're gonna work on the mesh and I think we'll just delete these two things up here. So, to select more than one thing, you usually hold down shift. So I'm gonna hold down shift, select my light, select my camera, and the delete key for Blender is X and delete. And I picked that with my left mouse button. And now we're gonna work on this. So I'm gonna get it in the right position. And before we go, we want to turn it into millimeters, something that we understand, and Blender doesn't have that by default. So I want you to move your pointer over here to the properties. I want you to select that scene properties. I want you to change the units, length to millimeters, and this unit scale to 0.001. Okay, that's done. Make it out of zoom mode. Then, you're going to select your cube, press tab so it all goes uh, highlights. And you're going to come up here to the overlays and press that little arrow down. You're going to change this to 0 0.001. You're going to turn on the Z as well, it's turned off by default. And you're going to come down to edge length and turn that on. So it'll start looking like that. Now you're going to press N and come across the view and change your clipping length. Add two zeros to that end. That'll do us. Okay, N again to make that disappear. I'll get rid of N. And we're ready to go. So it should look like this. We've got the blue for up and down. We've got our green for our Y and our red for our X. So I can pick little points and move them around, but I don't want you to do that yet. I want you to come up the top. You've got three little buttons up here. You've got the points, uh, the vertices, the edges and the faces. I want you to pick the edge. Now I want you to pick two edges. You can pick an edge and an edge, but if you want to pick two in one go, you're going to hold down the shift key. Um, try to move it around and pick these two that go along here with the green coming out. And that'll make our lives easier. So if you zoom around, don't pick the red, pick those two on the green. Okay, press X and delete those edges and now it's looking like our wind spinner. If I press A, it selects everything, it tells me that's a two millimeter by two millimeter little U-shaped thingy. We want it to be a bit bigger than that. So I want you to pick edge, hold down shift edge, edge I've picked the side three edges and we're going to go G to move now I need to lock it in I can't just guess up there you can see that number getting bigger 
I'm going to press, for me, X. And if you pick the right edges, it should be X. And I'm going to type in the difference between 2 and 20. Because I have my original rectangle at 30. But we folded the edges in to make a hem. So it's effectively 20. So we're going to add 18. Now watch. I'm just going to type in 18. Now it flicked it over the other side. I don't want that because that's 16. I'm going to press the minus key and it'll put it back where I wanted it and the left button. And now if I do an A, it is 20 mil, which is what I want. Um, you could, if I had those edges picked and press G for move and X to lock it in, you could go really slow and hold down the shift key. If it's not quite, if it's a bit, you know, a bit over like that, hold down the shift key and move your mouse and eventually it'll go really slow get it 20 mil. This edge and this edge we are going to now bring out along here along the Y Y axis the green one so I'm going to press G Y we're going to bring them out to 50 millimeters but we start at 2 so we only have to bring them out the difference I'm going to type in 48 once again they went to the other side I'm going to hit minus 48 so now if I did A I've got 50 by 20 which is perfect now I'm going to bring that face and bring it up here, the difference with which was 70 mil. So I come up to my face, that little button there, pick one face, press G and Z. I'm going to bring it up there. I'm going from 2, I want to come up to 70, so the difference is 68. There we go, we've got our little frame we've moved, I'm going to press A select everything N and I might just see if I can move it okay so I moved it to the dead center so I'll go back and I'll show you that's where it was right and you should look like that just a to select everything N to bring up my options come up to item and change the X, Y, and Z to zero. So that puts it in the middle of our frame like that. And to get rid of that, and I'm gonna press tab to go back to object mode. So I'm out of the edit mode. Now it's very thin. We're gonna give it a little thickness. I want you to have it selected so it's got that orange frame around it come over to the spanner the modifier properties and you're going to add a solidify right in the second column down the end here solidify and we're going to change that thickness to one millimeter now we didn't get a really sharp edge like that so what I want you to do, press tab, go back into edit mode, click your edges and pick those two with the shift button, okay? Now I'm going to do a little bevel to make it look like it's a piece of metal. Okay, so I'm going to press while they're selected and I'm in edit mode, control B. I'm just going to move the mouse until it starts to go like that. Bring it out you know, a little bit like that. And then I'm going to roll the wheel, and make it smooth. So I think about there looks good. And bang, there we go, we've got it rolled. I don't like those flat faces, so I'm going to right click and go shade smooth. And it's made it a little bit too smooth for me. I'm going to come over here to that little green triangle click on it so I'll zoom into there to show you that one and then I want you to come over to normals and turn on auto smooth now look what we've done there we go so now we've got nice smooth curves and sharp edges okay we're not going to worry about rolling that edge over we're going to just make it look pretty cool now we're going to add the, the the little spinner. 
So this is going to be a second part. We're going to go Shift A, add a plane. You can see it's quite small there. And we're going to um, scale it out. We, we know if we've set it up right, it'll be 2 mil by 2 mil. We're going to press S for scale. I'm going to bring it out. You can bring it out by hand if you want and then hold down the shift button when you get close. So what I did was I just I pressed S key, scaled it out and held down the shift key when I get close to 50. So about there and 50. Now for me, I'm going to rotate that on the X axis there. So I pressed R for rotate and X to lock it in there and I want to go 90 degrees. Okay. Now I want to halve it and stuff like that. So I'm going to go um, right click, subdivide and that's fine. I'm happy with that. So I'll go back and do it again. Right click while it's selected and I'm in edit mode and subdivide. Just those crosses there. So we've added a bit more. Okay, now I'm going to press K and use what we call the knife tool. We could um, imagine it's a scriber. I'm going to go click that corner, bring it down here, and it'll lock into where those edges connect. So when you see it go like that, click again and hit enter key. I'm going to do it again. K for the knife tool, click. On that corner click on that corner and it's not finished I have to press enter while it's selected um, I'm going to press tab to go back to object mode N to bring up my options and I can see that oh actually the scale is fine one 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 so I don't have to reset the scale so I'm going to N hide that tab to go back to edit and I'm going to do couple of things. I can now pick that as a face. I'm going to select that one like that. So I'm on face select. Select one. I'm going to press P to separate it by selection. Separate. P separate by selection. So now I could move to get back to object mode. Now I can take those and do things with them. I'm going to take that one, hold down shift this one and this one, and I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis. I pressed Y and type in 45. Actually, I'm going to do minus. So 45 like that. Now I'm going to take this little piece here and I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis. Actually, the Z axis for this one. I've got my center there. So let me show you what I would do. Um, let's bring it over. Tab. Going to select that edge and I'm going to right click and subdivide. That's giving me a little point here. I'm going to select that, right click, and go snap vertices um, cursor to selected. Press tab to go to object mode, right click, and say I want my origin to the cursor. And I'll do this again in a minute. Now when I go rotate on the Z, it'll bend in that edge there. And I'm going to type in 90 minus. So I've got one edge like that. Let's go through it again. Remember, at any stage where you need to, you are going to stop it and rewind it. Pick that little corner. I'm going to rotate that to the front, but I don't want to rotate it around here. So I'm going to go tab into edit. Select my edge, 
right click and subdivide it it'll give me two edges with a little point in the middle I'm going to pick vertice that one there select that one point right click go down to snap vertices cursor to select it move that little thing tab out right click set origin to the cursor now I'm going to go R for rotate Z for the Z axis move it in here and type in 90 it's gone the other way so I'm going to hit minus now I've got what's looking like a spinner so I'm going to now go pick those three so click left hold down shift shift and then I'm going to press control J join them together so they're now one piece again go back to edit mode pick all those edges so let's have a look one um, have to be on edge one edges picked and let's um let's fold them around too so control B it's not letting me so I'm gonna select everything right click and come up to mesh clean up and go maybe Merge by distance. And while I'm at it, so everything's selected, mesh, I might do a cleanup, limited dissolve. Now let's see if that has worked. So now I select those two edges, control B, aha, perfect. Bring them in about the same, something like that. Left button, so now they're folded. last well not the last thing I want to do out of edit mode in object mode right click shade smooth may as well come over here to my little spanner add the solidify uh, one mil we want it okay don't worry about apply now what I probably want to do is come back to my green triangle and use auto smooth for my normals and it's looking pretty good I might change my view so now I'm going to press 3 G Y to lock it in there and bring it to where you think about there now it's a it feels like it's a little big so I'm going to press S for scale and and bring it so it just touches like that. So just these points here, like there. Okay. Now let's give it a material, make it spin. That one there, select it, come down here, pick the little ball. It already has a material, I'm going to delete that. But this one shouldn't have one. That's because that started as a cube and we've turned it into that base. Now, you want to add something. I want you to go to Edit, Preferences. In this little box up here, come down to Add-ons. Little box here, type in Blender. And you're looking for one called the Blender Kit. Have that selected and then close that window. It's not on by default. You have to turn it on. Then when you press the N key, you'll see one here called blender kit and we're going to find some material so I'm going to go to material turn on little eye yours may look a little different but you'll you'll work it out and type in um, steel or, or how about just metal so then I get a whole bunch of metals and that looks very much like our sheet metal so I'm going to pick it double click and it's going to apply to that. Now, we can't see it at the moment, 
because we're in the wrong view. We're in shaded view. So my cat's just jumped on the desk and it's pushing over the microphone. Go away, cat. You're a bad animal. Okay. So anyway, I zoomed in. I'm going to show you. There are my three views up there. I'm going to go to that one in the middle. It's going to show me textured view. Okay, so I can see it's metal now. I'm going to click on this one. Actually, it's a funny metal, but I'll fix that in a minute. Um, I'm going to go to that one. Pick that metal. Uh, I must have picked the wrong metal. I'll blame the cat. Oh, it could be because of my mesh. Anyway. Let's fix that up. We are going to do a couple of things to make it look a little bit better. We're going to go on to that object, come back to our spanner. We're going to apply, solidify. If you've already done it, it's fine. And while we're at it, we'll do that one too, apply. Now I'm going to click on that base, press tab. Everything should be selected. So if it isn't, press A and then I want you to press U to go smart UV project just go OK it's fine get out of edit mode it's fixed it up now may as well do the same to this one I'm gonna select it press tab go to edit A to select everything and U and smart unwrap looking better already okay so there we have we 3d modeled our spinner. Let's turn off a few things and animate it. Actually we'll animate it, then we'll turn off a few things. So I want you to select the uh, fan, spinner, propeller and we're going to right click and set origin to geometry. Puts it right in the middle like that. So right click, set origin to geometry and then we're going to spin it around now I'll just drag that window up you can see my little timeline if you've done any video editing let's make it spin um, in a second okay so I'm going to come along here and say I only want 24 frames and with that selected I'm going to hover over it and press I and I'm going to pick rotation. So I'm keyframing it. So if you've done any little drawings before, you may have drawn keyframes and then filled in the difference in between. I'm going to drag that blue slider to 24. I'm going to come over here and press R. Once again, I'm going to rotate it on the Z. So I pressed R and then Z and I'm going to rotate it around and I might type in three five nine and hit minus and then I'm going to go I oh, I'm going to escape out of there press escape I rotation and let's see how it spin oh it didn't spin I'm going to pick that keyframe X delete keyframe and do it again so I've got one there come to 24 pick that maybe the minus didn't work R for rotate Z for the axis, type in 359, hit enter, I, rotation. Okay, there we go. Now I think it's technically it's going backwards, let's have a look. Oh no. There we go, we've got our animation spinning. We're going to come up here, let's have a look what it looks like if we turn off the floor and all our axis, so that's what it should look like. We're going to put that in the little video, but you've done your first 3D modeled animation. Good work, Year 7.